We are live. The floor is yours, Dave. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are meeting tonight under extraordinary circumstances. Our community, along with communities around the country and the world, have been observing social distancing and other health safety measures to slow the progress of the COVID-19 pandemic for many weeks. To allow normal or, or near normal operations of the city government functions uh, to continue, the governor of New York has declared a disaster emergency and has issued multiple executive orders and the city of Rochester mayor has issued several local emergency orders which together authorize the holding of this hearing virtually. Subject to waivers of certain requirements of the New York State Open Meetings Law and the Rochester Zoning Code. In addition, at a prior meeting, we amended the Planning Commission rules and procedures to allow us to conduct this hearing as authorized by the governor's and mayor's emergency orders to waive other requirements to allow us to proceed with this hearing as I will now describe. Primarily, these waivers involve the requirement for in-person attendance at this hearing. The emergency orders permit us to hold this hearing by teleconference with no in-person attendance, allow applicant presentations, public testimony by teleconference, written public comments both in favor or in opposition to the application to be submitted by email, by hard copy, uh, mailed to the zoning office or deposited in the secure drop box located in the permit office of City Hall. The deadline for the submission of written comments was 5 p.m. Friday, March 5th, 2021. And the deadline to register to provide spoken comments was 12 noon today, Monday, March 8th, 2021. Although the conduct of this hearing has been altered uh, in some of its normal procedures, many remain the same. All the normal notifications for this hearing, including mail notice, publication and posting of the notices were followed. A staff report has been prepared for each application and, along, and a report along with the application and other pertinent documents have been, been presented to the commission members and posted online several days prior to tonight's meeting. All the normal timeframes for the applicant presentations, comments in favor of or opposition to the application remain the same. And most of the most importantly, uh, the commission will hear, review, make decisions about all the applications with the same diligence and using the same standards as required by the zoning code. Before we, we begin, I would like to explain the ground rules for the hearing. In case of when the case is called, the applicant will be allowed 15 minutes to present their case to the commission. The applications were all posted on the city's website at least a week ago and were available for public review. All applicants were advised to ensure that their applications were complete and include all the information that they intend to present at this hearing tonight. As the application is presented, staff uh, will, as reasonably as possible, identify and try to show the pages of the app application that the applicant is addressing in the presentation. Following the normal procedure, commission members may ask the applicant questions about the application. After the applicant's presentation is completed to the staff, is completed, the staff will read into records uh, any public comments that were submitted after the staff report was completed and posted on the city website. First, those in, op in support of the application, then those in opposition. These comments will be limited to 10 minutes if submitted by a neighborhood association and three minutes for all other comments. If, if reading the submitted written uh, comments exceed the time frame, staff will summarize the comments. Public comments that were received in time to be included in the staff report will not be read into the hearing tonight. The public record, the public also has the opportunity to register in advance to speak at the virtual hearing. After the comments have been, been read, the applicant will have five minutes to offer any testimony in rebuttal. At the conclusion of the applicant's rebuttal testimony, the case will be closed. However, if the commission determines that 
substantial new evidence has been presented by the applicant during the hearing, either during the original or rebuttal testimony, the case will be adjourned and held over to the commission's next need, next announced hearing date in order to give the public uh, opportunity to review and comment on the new evidence. After completing all the hearings on, on the agenda tonight, the commission may elect to take a short break, which will be announced. After the hearing and break, if any, the commission will commence deliberation and voting on all the applications, except any application that may have been adjourned to another meeting day. Please note that if this is, if your case is approved today, a written description will be mailed to you within 15 business days. Uh, the decision will inform you of the next steps in order to complete the application process. Before we have open the first case, please note that we are all volunteers and we would like each commissioner uh, to confirm their presence for the purpose of a roll call uh, by establishing a quorum for this hearing and introduce themselves and mention the quadrant in which they live. Harry Carroll, East District. Kim Harding, East District. Eugenio Marlin, Northwest. Elton Pichardo, Northeast. Marquita Williams, Southwest. And Dave Watson, Southwest. And maybe have the first case, please. I'm going to take these eye contacts out because I can't see. <laughs> Oh, sorry. So we just need whoever's uh, needs to be sworn to present this uh, first case. When I didn't realize I was on mute. I was. I've been talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, case number one. It's a subdivision. The file is S two twenty twenty one. The address is eighty nine Genesee Street. The zoning district is an institutional plan development, number 10, St. Mary's Hospital. The applicant is Hugh Thomas, who is the Chief Administrative Officer of Rochester Regional Health. The request is to subdivide one parcel into four parcels to facilitate the establishment of a long-term acute care specialty hospital where two parcels will not have frontage or driveways on an existing improved public street. This is an action requiring City Planning Commission approval. And I have that... Car uh, Commissioner Carol Harding, Marlon, Picardo, Watson, and, uh, and Watson all visited the sites. Commissioner Williams, were you able to visit the site? Yes. Okay. So all present commissioners have visited the site. And, uh, let me just uh, pause right now. I need to pick get my uh, testimony sheet that I need to read to the applicant. Hold on one second. Oh, sure. Take your time. Oh, it stopped. I kind of hoped we were going to be doing spa music in the background from now on. <laughs> Help us stay calm and make excellent and informed decisions. <laughs> okay, I am back. Uh, is the applicant there, Mr. Thomas? Um, Mr. Chairman, this is John Sharaba representing the application this evening. Yes, John. Okay, I will swear you in. Okay. Uh, do you do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And thank you, sir. And you may continue, you may start. Uh, okay. Do you have anyone joining you, uh, Mr. Shraba? Uh, uh, Karen may be joining me from the hospital. Um, I don't know if she's on yet. Yes, I'm. I'm here. Okay, Karen. Okay. I will also swear you in, even if you, just in case you do speak. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, ma'am. And, and you may proceed, sir. Who, who's that? What is your last name, Karen? Karen? Yes, uh, Kinter, K-I-N-T-E-R. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is John Sharaba. I'm with Land Tech Surveying and Planning. Our office is located at 1105 Ridgeway Avenue in the city of Rochester. Uh, this evening, I'm representing 
Rochester Regional regarding this application. Uh, I think we're all familiar with the site. It's, it's the St. Mary's Hospital located at the corner of West Main and Genesee Street. Uh, the entire campus is zoned IPD and it's approximately 10 acres and includes three existing parcels. Uh, this, this evening we are talking about 89 uh, Genesee Street, which is the main portion of the hospital. And that's what we're proposing to create uh, into four lots. The reason why we're doing this is the hospital is in the process of establishing a long-term care facility and therefore federal guidelines require that that facility has its own and distinct address and property. So my company is retained to do a boundary and instrument survey of the campus. Uh, at that time, we located exterior walls, interior walls and established property lines or future property lines in um, physical locations that would best aid the hospital in, the, in this goal. In doing that, we created uh, two lots, lots um, R1C and R1D, which are integral to the development and do not have frontage on any dedicated road. Um, and we also created another parcel around the Bishop Kearney building. So now all these new parcels will have new addresses so that this property is federal, is compliant with the federal guidelines. The, um, we have also uh, prepared a cross access utility and common easement uh, that will be filed as part of this so all these parcels can work in unison. It's important to remember that we're not proposing any physical change uh, with this application that we're not proposing to sell any properties. It'll still be under the ownership of Rochester Regional. It's really just a function of adhering to guidelines uh, established by the, the federal government. Uh, this plan has been submitted to outside agencies within the county. And um, hopefully after your approval, we can route this project through Monroe County Health Department and file the subdivision map with the county and the city and create these new parcels. So that's a brief overview of the project. It's fairly simplistic in nature. Uh, I know you're used to more integral projects than this, um, but I guess I can answer any questions at this time. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions for the applicant? I do. Yes, Karen. Yeah, the subdivision leaves two of those plots landlocked as it came up in the description. There's no public street access, is that correct? That's correct. If you look at lot R2D, excuse me, R1D, um, where that cursor is right now, <laughs> and then the other one at lot R1C, those do not have uh, access to public road. But this just... isn't unique. If you look further to the north, where it shows lot two, um, that is right just north of lot R1C, that parcel was created a few years ago uh, through the subdivision process, and that does not have frontage on a dedicated road. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. Um, and I think that cross access issue will handle the legal issues. I know we have some other hurdles to, to go through with other agencies, but we'll work through those. Can you describe what's on those two lots currently? So the lot uh, R1C that's the medical services, I believe it's the emergency, majority of that's the emergency room. And then the other area, lot R1D is the Bradley wing, which I think is the, the core of the hospital and, and rooms and things such as that. But Karen might be able to explain that a lot better than me. Yeah, I can add some additional comments. Um, lot R1D includes um, our dialysis and uh, dental clinics are the two primary outpatient services located on that uh, parcel. And in addition, Lot R1C, um, we don't necessarily have an emergency room, but we do have a walk-in care center that provides urgent care and behavioral health emergency services, along with some primary care offices um, in that uh, section, that, that parcel as well. Excellent. Thank you for the additional information. Yep, you're welcome. Any other questions uh, for the applicant? No um, questions? I, I have one. Uh, yes, Tom. From the law department. Um, 
is the federal requirements for uh, the subdivision is are there pre are there practical reasons with regard to function that they're required or is it more about just assuring um, like legal accountability for a particular type of use it on a particular parcel? Yeah, there, there are not um, any additional requirements other than um, having a separation. Um, and the form of separation is through uh, an address separation and fully separating the parcels um, complies with the Medicare guidelines. Okay. I, I have one question. Is the separation tied to um, the type of funding that will be provided for those different par parcels? Not, not directly. In order for us to establish the long-term care hospital, um, Medicare, which is a form of the, the insurance mm -hmm. that we are reimbursed on, is requiring us in order to get that designation to separate these parcels right. uh, to be compliant with their guidelines. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for the applicant? Yeah, so you're not, but you're not planning to put any facility on any of these other parcels? Uh, no, we're not adding or changing any of the current services in the parcels that we're breaking out. All right, any other questions for the applicant? I actually have a question. How, yes, Anna. how is the use that you're proposing different from what's existing? Uh, we're, we're not changing any of the services and any of these new parcels. <clears throat> they will all remain the same. Um, the new service will be the long-term acute care hospital, um, which this is a hospital campus, so it's serving a different type of patients. Okay. Um, is the only distinguishing factor. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Hearing none. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, at this time, Anna, do we have any testimony that needs to be read? Nope. There was no public comment, either written or there hasn't been anyone who's uh, registered to speak at the hearing this evening. Okay. All right, so that being said, uh, we will close this case and we will have the next case, please. Okay, great. Case number two has been removed by staff, so we're moving on to case number three. Case number three is a special permit. The file number is E172021. The addresses are 448 and 464 Portland Avenue. The zoning is M1 Industrial District. The applicant is Jason Randall of Raymar Steel. The request is to establish outdoor storage of flatbed trailers in connection with the industrial operation conducted on the premises, Raymar Steel. This is an action requiring city planning commission approval. Uh, Commissioner Williams, were you able to visit this site? Yes. Okay, so in that case, all present commissioners have visited the site. And who do we have uh, providing testimony? The applicant? Yeah, we should uh, have Scott and Betsy. Yep. Hello. Hello. Yep, we can. Can you hear me? Yes, is that Scott Fisk? No, this is Ed Perone from Perone Engineering. Uh, our offices are at 349 West Commercial Street, East Rochester. And along with me this evening will be Scott Fisk from RD Associates and Betsy Brog from Woods Oviet as uh, legal counsel. Okay, uh, we will, I will swear you all in. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do. We do. Yeah. All right, thank you. You may proceed, sir. Thank you. Um, this evening, we're here on behalf of Raymar Steel uh, that are looking at uh, a proposed addition to their existing facility that is located at Portland Avenue. 
432 Portland Avenue. Uh, this site uh, is uh, actually bounded by on the west side by Portland, uh, north uh, by residents, on the east by Miller Street, and on the south by uh, Council Street. It's approximately 6.1 acres of property. It's zoned M1. And uh, specifically, the project that we have before you this evening is an addition to the existing fabrication and steel manufacturing of about a 44,000 square foot fabrication building, along with uh, additional new parking, uh, a proposed addition to the present office spaces. And this evening, uh, which we'll focus on a little bit more is the outdoor storage area, which is located in the northeast corner of the property. Um, this investment is approximately five and a half million dollars to the area uh, for this particular project. The outdoor storage that we are reorganizing all of the storage that is on this site. This site, just so that the uh, commission is aware, they have been in operation for over 30 years on this particular site and uh, they would like to continue to do so and they're good neighbors in this, particular, in this area. The uh, proposed outdoor storage area is approximately 117 by 177 feet. It will be a stone outdoor storage area. And it is located, uh, as I said, in the northeast corner. There will be a landscape buffer area on the north, uh, which will have uh, arborvitae as its screening. Um, these arbor body, there are 34 of them that will be proposed and their height will get as high as 10 feet. Uh, along with that on the east or the Miller Street side, there is existing landscaping evergreen trees that were uh, installed some years ago in a prior uh, project for the uh, parcel. And we're now adding additional two evergreen trees. They're Black Hill spruce that are up in the north, far northeast corner to further screen them. In addition to this, on a previous application, we did in fact get approval by city for a 10 foot high wrought iron steel fence, which is totally enclosing the entire uh, area of the, uh, of the project. So uh, to understand a little bit more about the project, and we talked about this with staff, the outdoor storage does have a capacity of roughly 12 flatbeds. These flatbeds are roughly five feet in height, they're about 10 feet wide, eight to 10 feet wide, and they're generally, they'll be as long as 53 feet and as short as 43 feet. I think all of you might be familiar with when you see flatbeds on the road. I believe there's some photos for you to, to look at. Um, there will be at times some steel that is actually loaded on the uh, flatbeds uh, in wait to be brought into fabrication. Real quick on how the, this outdoor storage is very critical to the operation of the fabrication of the steel within the new facility and in the existing facility. Product is generally brought in off of Portland Avenue. It may go directly to the far east end as entry into immediately into the shop, or it may be actually stored for a short period of time in this outdoor storage area to allow for uh, timing for the fabrication to be uh, then in play, put into the uh, facility for it to get fabricated. Uh, if trailers are actually stored out there for the time being temporarily, uh, when it's time for the product to be taken out to the customers, track or trailer, tractor tra trailers will be picked up in that storage area, brought to the far western end, the area closest to Portland Avenue. Trucks will then be loaded uh, by uh, cranes into the trucks, and then they will be off to the various different customer locations. Um, this, this facility also will have on it a uh, enclosed dumpster area. It'll be a six foot high uh, batten fence, uh, chain link batten fence to, to enclose the uh, refuse so that uh, we meet the requirements. Now the special permit that we are asking for is Primarily the setback uh, from Miller Street, which is required is 200 feet. And uh, obviously we're looking at 22 feet. Um, this had pre-existed and we're just adding more landscaping to help buffer that. Along the north, 
Again, uh, we're not meeting quite the setback requirements, but we are providing what I call a living screen, a very dense, dense living screen to afford it for security and to help buffer the area and the neighborhood. We don't think that this uh, proposal will uh, inhibit the character of the neighborhood. We certainly think that will be helped to secure the area even further and certainly is very essential and critical to our business uh, for the operation. It is part of the flow of the manufacturing with this outdoor storage. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to either Scott or, or Betsy, and they can add a few more comments if they wish. This is Scott Fisk. I've been associated with Raymar oh, easily from the late 80s, early 90s. And it was our firm that had done the previous work on their site, both the small office building and fabrication plant. And then the uh, additions to the plant they're in now, plus the offices. They've grown substantially uh, in the time they've been there. Uh, they're now uh, uh, between 60 and 64 people uh, that are employed there. Part of this project has been to be able to keep these people, keep them employed, allow Raymar to continue to grow and to make them a better operation going forward. This addition is a very substantial investment for them, as you already heard. Uh, they already have uh, over a million dollars in equipment sitting in storage waiting to go into this facility when it's done. Uh, one of the nice things about this addition is it will actually tend to reduce the appearance of any outdoor storage because a lot of the material that will arrive on site will go into this building fairly quickly uh, and then be processed and brought back out the other end. Uh, the fence that is there now was something that we got for them as it through a variance process some years ago. Uh, it has been uh, very effective for them in securing their property. Uh, I think if you were out to the site, I know it's a difficult time of year, but you would see that they've taken very good care of the site. They're good custodians and custodians of the property they have. Um, they're invested in the area and um, they want to get this uh, through the city approval process so they can continue on the site. I'd be glad to have answer any questions if you might have for me. Betsy, do you have anything? Um. I don't know if we still have time left. I'll just, uh, as the board knows, this is a special permit application. It carries a favorable legal presumption of, of being permitted. Um, we've addressed these special permit standards in the code um, in the application. I'd be happy to go through them if, um, if the chairman would like me to do that. Uh, but I do think that this project uh, is a great project for the neighborhood. It's great that Raymar is investing and uh, you know growing at this location. Uh, they take good care of the property. The use is uh, permitted uh, under the current zoning. So we're really just looking at a special permit for the outdoor storage. Um, it's consistent with the comprehensive plan and the zoning code. Uh, they've been there for over 30 years. Manufacturing is consistent. Uh, it supports a strong and healthy neighborhood. They provide uh, quality jobs. Uh, the work they do at this facility is helping to build the city. Uh, they manufacture steel that is used in construction throughout the city uh, and wider areas. Um, there'll be no uh, substantial or undue adverse impact on any adjacent property or on the character of the neighborhood. No impact, uh, adverse impact on traffic conditions, parking. Really, they have adequate parking. This is improving actually the on site traffic circulation. Uh, if anything, it's helping to kind of clean up existing conditions. They've had outdoor storage all these years. They've now just uh, been a little more thoughtful in terms of how it's going to lay out. Uh, so no adverse impacts. Um, substantial screening you've seen is in place uh, to kind of deal with that northeast corner. Um, the use is not going to dominate uh, the neighborhood. It's an existing operation. The outdoor storage is really just a small piece of the overall operation. It's not going to dominate the property or dominate the area. It's fairly well designed with, again, proper buffering and screening to mitigate any potential visual impact. Uh, the, um, 
the site is already adequately served by all of the necessary public facilities. It's an existing business. It's a strong, viable uh, part of the neighborhood and helps support the uh, the uh, quality uh, and you know conditions of the neighborhood. Um, and whether there'll be any disruption of any natural, or scenic, or cultural uh, resources of any kind. We don't have anything with this property of anything. This is just an additional investment in the quality of the uh, development of the property. With that, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that, that, that any of the commissioners have for us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, at this time, any questions for the applicant? Any questions? All right, hearing none. Uh, any testimony, Anna, from that have that wasn't in the staff report? We didn't receive any pu written public comment, nor have we uh, received anyone registering to provide spoken comment at this hearing. Okay. Well, that being said, uh, we will close this case, and that will also close thank, this. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, and that will also we will close this hearing. Uh, and I would also like to ask the commissioners: Would you like to? Just to continue into the deliberation, or do, or do you want to break? I say we continue. I say we yeah. continue. We'll continue. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll continue right into deliberations. We'll give Anna yes. a, a chance to get her things together, and we'll proceed yeah. there. I'm just going to stop uh, streaming and stop recording and then start again.